You're watching a message from Connect Church of Jacksonville. Find us online at connectchurchjacks.org. Happy Memorial Day. We remember today the sacrifice of those who died to uh, protect our rights to, to help us to live in freedom. So that's what Memorial Day is about. We honor those this morning. Um, and listen, today we also have an opportunity, it's, you know, as a lead pastor, it's a, it's a privilege and an honor uh, to allow some of the other people that are up and coming in ministry to, to be able to uh, come and speak. You know, Jesus speaks through more than just one voice. Y'all know that, right? And so, uh, you know, every one of us only have a part, even ministers only have a part of what God has for his people. That's why we need each other. And we're very blessed this morning to have our, one of our associate pastors here. He's uh, our uh, student ministries pastor and our outreach pastor. And uh, we just appreciate Pastor Bobby Montgomery. He's going to come and share what God's laid on his heart this morning. So, Pastor Bobby, why don't you come up here? Y'all honor him. Give him honor. Yeah. We love you. Thank you. Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing? First of all, I just I just want to just thank everybody who served. Uh, I used to serve uh, in the military. I did eight years in the Navy, and uh, just think about all the sacrifice, um, all the time spent away from the family, all the lonely nights doing special holidays, doing birthdays, doing all the important things that sometimes uh, civilians that don't think about. So I really want to honor you. And uh, that video that was just shown, is just, it just touched my heart because, you know, I know some people who, you know, lost their lives in the Navy. And, uh, you know, I just want to honor everybody uh, that's here. So today, we're going to be talking about adulting. Um, and I'm going to come in a different, kind of different avenue. The title of my message is called From Faith to Fear. From Faith to Fear. Because it takes faith to step up and do what God is telling us to do. Can't do what God's telling us to do, walking in fear. So let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to share your word, Lord God, that's so valuable, Father. And you entrusted me to deliver it. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you will be seen through this message, Lord, that I decrease, that you will increase in me, that your glory will be manifested today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So from faith to fear, what are you talking about, Pastor Bobby? What are you talking about? Well, um, how many people know of a man named Elijah out of the Bible, the Old Testament? Yeah. Elijah was a great prophet of God. God used him tremendously. God used him, I mean, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to call fire down from heaven, to bring rain on a land that had a drought for years, God used this man of God, mighty man of God. He was mighty because God lived in him. This morning, you are mighty because Jesus Christ is living in you. Some of us might not realize that, how mighty we are when we got Christ living within us. But sometimes we can operate in fear. After God has done some great things in our lives, after God has used us to move in a great capacity, but yet at times we get caught up in fear. So 1 Kings 19, 1 through 3, I'm going to read it. And I'm going to just share, I'm going to try to be transparent as possible, just share what God put on my heart this morning. 1 Kings 19, 1 through 3. Ahab, which was the king at that time, told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Remember, I said Elijah was a great man of God. Uh, in the passage before, when you read your Bible in uh, chapter 18, 
Elijah was used to destroy 450 prophets of Baal. Baal was a, 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 a pagan god, a god, a fertility god that they worshipped. I mean, for Baal to answer their prayers, they would cut themselves. They would do all these crazy things to try to get Baal, their god, to answer their prayers. Elijah walked into a victory where God destroyed all of them. Fire came down from heaven, rain, everything happened. Elijah was victorious. 450 prophets of Baal were put to death that day. So then we go on, and in 19, where I start off, where it says, King Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Now, this is the king going to his wife. Now, I know she the queen, and I understand that, but why is the king running to his wife like, hey, honey, this dude did this. This dude did that. This dude, like, you know how you go tell on somebody, oh, he hit me. I'm going to tell mama. It's like, you the king, dude. I'm going to my wife. He did this to me. He did this to our kingdom. All right? And he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel... Not King Ahab. It say Jezebel sent the messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life at the life of the ones by them this time tomorrow. So basically she's saying, If I don't get you, if I don't destroy you like you destroyed my prophets, let them kill me. That's how much of a passion and the desire she had to kill this mighty man of God. Jezebel, the king, allowed his wife to send this message out to this man of God. And he just sent back just chilling. Just chilling. Okay, then the message came to Elijah. Then, he, then Elijah was afraid. Hold on, you just defeated 450 prophets of Baal. God used you to do this great thing. But you get this message and say, he's afraid. And he arose and ran for his life. And came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Okay. What you think are some things that had Elijah walking in fear after he had just celebrated this great victory? What are some things in your life that have you walking in fear after God has done some great things in your life? As you have seen the miracles and the demonstrated power of the Lord operating in your life, and God asks you to do something, God asks you to step up, God asks you to mature in Him, what happened? What things cause us to say, oh, Lord, oh, no, I ain't doing that? You know what I'm saying? What, what causes us to do that? Then we look at, I had an example like of Adam, Adam and Eve. They walking with God, they doing what God telling them to do, you know, obeying God. Then they sin, they screw up. Then all of a sudden, they want to run from God. They ran in fear. Now, you're walking with the creator, but now all of a sudden you're running. You're walking in fear. What's going on here? What's going on here? I can say one thing. One thing that causes us to walk in fear is simple, walking in the flesh, not walking in the spirit of God. Elijah had done this great thing, but all of a sudden he said, I'm afraid I'm going to run for my life. So he was walking in the flesh at that time. 2 Timothy 1 through 7 says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of self-control. Elijah was afraid when he heard the messenger come to him from Jezebel. So sometimes we could be afraid when we hear what other people got to say. When God's telling us to do something, when he's telling us 
to step up. Hey, you've been here too long. You've been at this particular place in your life too long. It's time to step up. It's time to move forward. But then we hear a whisper in our ears saying, "Uh uh-uh, no, don't do that. No, no, no. We get afraid. We run from the call of God on our life. We run from the things that God is telling us to do, which makes us end up walking in the flesh. Because we're not walking in the spirit if we're running away from what God's telling us to do. It's impossible to walk in the spirit and the flesh at the same time. This great man of God here, like I said earlier, you are all, we are all great men and women of God in this place. If we look at ourselves that way, we have Christ living in us, the almighty Savior, the one who went to the cross, the one who just experienced all this pain, shame, brutality on his body, living in us. But yet and still... We choose to walk in fear. Another thing that I got was Elijah lost confidence in God when he heard the report of the enemy. Elijah, they're going to they, they, they take your life. You killed all these people. You killed all these uh, prophets of Baal. Now they're going to take your life. So Elijah ran for his life. Physically, he ran for his life. But spiritually, Sometimes we can run for our lives. Sometimes we can run from the life that God has designed for us. Because that's not what we want to do. So we can get caught up doing what we want. And God is like, no, I need you to come up. I need you to do what I'm telling you. But now I'm running for my life. I'm saving my life. I'm going to keep what I want to do. Regardless of what you're telling me to do. It's the sacrifice, y'all. It's the sacrifice to say yes to God. It's the sacrifice to say yes when, when everybody's telling you no. It's the sacrifice to say yes when everybody just turn you down. When you're trying to stand for the Lord and, and people all around you is just like, dude, you crazy. Why are you living for God? Why are you taking a stand? It's not that serious. Some people may even say Jesus ain't real. God is not real. Who are you serving? Why do that? I'm here to tell you today that the Lord Jesus has saved my soul. It was God who died on the cross for me. So no matter what anybody say, I'm going to walk in his boldness. I'm going to step up when God tells me to, regardless how comfortable I feel. I'm going to allow God to stretch me, pull me out of that comfort zone. All of us have things in our heart that God is ministering to us right now, that God is telling us to do, that God wants us to pursue in him. And we're simply saying no. God, I ain't doing it. I like to be transparent, but there was a point in my life where I ran. There was a point in my life where I played Jonah. Y'all know who Jonah is, right? Yeah, that guy who got swallowed by that big old fish. Well, now I'm thinking about eating some fish, but, you know, he ran from what God was telling him to do. At 15 years old or 14 years old, I knew God was calling me. And I didn't want to do that because I thought I was too young. I didn't want to preach the word. My mindset wasn't set on preaching the gospel. My mind was set on selling drugs. That's what I did when I was young, 15 years old. I ran from God. And to a point in my life at 18, where I made, I hit the crossroads and I had to make a major decision in my life. And where I had to tell myself, If I don't obey God now, I'm going to die. I might not never have a chance. That's what happened with me. I'm not trying to put fear in your hearts, but what I'm saying is, if you don't do it, somebody else will. Eventually, God will keep trying to get you to do it. God will keep talking to you. God will keep sending people your way. 
Guess what? Somebody else will take your place. At 18 years old, if I would have made the decision to refuse God, somebody else would be taking my place somewhere, preaching the same message that God told me that I was supposed to be preaching. So he listened to what the people thought. He listened to what people said. He ran from his life. He ran for his life because he cared more about what Jezebel was saying, what the enemy was whispering in his ear. You do that, you're going to lose all your money. <laughs> if you make that sacrifice, ain't nobody going to want to be around you no more. If you start working at that job and, and, and do God's work, you're going to be living out on the side of the road. Now, these are just examples. I don't know what God is telling your heart. But what I'm saying is, right there is a crossroad decision in your life, in our life. Are we going to agree to what God is telling us to do? Are we going to stay where we at? God is calling us this morning, every one of us, to step up. God is calling every one of us to mature, become more of an adult in Christ. We all adults in here, and, you know, we got some kids here, but still, God is calling us to mature. Search your hearts. Think about where you are right now. While I'm preaching, God will begin. He's already ministering to your hearts right now. I know he's dealing with you about some things. So, in Matthew 16, we know we're talking about Elijah running for his life. Elijah valuing his idea for his life more than God's idea for his life. Now, Matthew 16, Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life would lose it. But whoever loses his life for my name's sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? If you lose your life for God's name's sake, you'll gain your life. Do that make any sense at all? If you lose your life for God, you'll gain your life. What is this life that we're talking about this morning? What is this life? Okay, well, here's an example. I can say, yeah, I, I did the, the drug thing. But even before the drug thing, when I was going to high school, only thing I loved to do was play football. That was it. I love football. I, I woke up in the morning and think about playing football. I would go outside and throw the football to myself. 24-7, that's all. I didn't need nobody to play with. I just... Hey, as long as I got a football, I throw it on the house, I run and catch it, I throw it up, I run and catch it. If I had friends, we throw in a football all day, all night. That's the life that I wanted. That's the life that I thought I was gonna get. Oh God, you know what? Hey, uh, I could be in the NFL, I could, I could play football and I could still preach your, your message on the side, you know. I could still, you know, do what you're calling me to do and still have God in the center of it. I made some choices in my life that hindered that, that screwed that up. Kelly had an example before how he used to want to be a race car driver. But he said the, uh, the seats was too small for him to sit in there, so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it ain't like we, we uh, grew up thinking the life I want to live is the life of a pastor and a preacher and I want to live for Jesus. Yeah, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. That wasn't the life that I picked in the flesh. Not walking in the flesh. Notice I said walking in the flesh. 
What life are you willing to give up that's still in line with your flesh? I ain't talking about, you know, uh, a regular job where you got to put food on the table. I, I'm, I know that. But what I'm saying is there are certain things in our lives that's keeping us from coming up. Put that part of your life down so you can live more in me. So you could grow more in what I'm calling you to do. He say, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else shall be added. So why are we so focused on chasing the money? Why are we so focused on chasing after a spouse or chasing after uh, this great opportunity or chasing this and chasing that? When God say it'll be added to our lives if we pursue the life that he had for us. Yeah, we're supposed to be motivated. Yeah, we're supposed to take initiative. But that shouldn't consume our whole life. Where God is not even in the center of it anymore. We look up one day and we we pursuing that thing. We pursuing so much, God on a back burner. Ah, uh, man, uh, I don't even... Man, I ain't even spend time with God. I ain't even, I don't even got time to read my word. Church, oh, yeah, right. I'm getting this money now. I'm getting whatever it is that I want now. Because I put my life, what I want in my life, above what God wants. You know this man right here? Pastor Kelly right here. For all y'all don't know, he took a pay cut from a good paying job that he was working to step into more of what God was telling him to do. He stopped working at that job. Now, that's him. Like I say, whatever God dealing with you on your heart. I ain't saying quit your job tomorrow I'm just, or Tuesday. I'm just saying these are examples. He took a pay cut to do what God was telling him to do. And God is rewarding him for that. Multiply more than you could ever think or imagine. I did the same thing. I was in the military eight years. Hey, I was set. I could have done 20 years, retired, and been good. Like I say, what God was telling me. This is what God was telling me. Don't throw stones at me. But God was telling me. Where you're at right now, you can't grow as long as you stay there. It's time for you to move forward. God, but I got a permanent job, getting paid on the first and 15. I got benefits for the rest of my life. Let me just stay in here and do 20 years, and I'm good. I can minister to people on the boat. I could do a little Bible study on the, on the boat, you know, whatever. But I'm getting paid. God was like, no, nah, I need you to get out. I have need of you. I have need of you. The Lord is saying, I have need of you. I need you to come up. I need you to walk in a more mature way. And I have to make a decision. I chose to do what God wanted me to do. And guess what? I'm good. My family has never lacked anything. When I got out, they didn't lack. Food, house, whatever. God took care of everything. I chose to step out on faith. Everybody I knew in the military at that time was like, dude, you crazy. You silly. This is a guaranteed job. What are you thinking about? You're not going to make it out there. Nobody's going to hire you. It's in 2010. It's like, ain't nobody hiring right now. What are you doing? God was telling me to step out of my comfort zone and trust him, not trust in myself, not trust in the life that I have lined up for me and my, my family. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. 
For whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my name's sake will find it. I said all that to say that. What are you willing to give up for Christ? Let's look at David and Goliath. Y'all know about David and Goliath, right? All right. David was, they say he was a young kid, handsome looking guy. Um, looked over all the time. Nobody really looked at David like anything. You know, he, he uh, tended the sheep, uh, walked around smelling like sheep all the time, sheep cologne. You know, that was the, the fresh fragrance of the day. If you ain't smelling like sheep, uh, you ain't doing nothing. Sheep and sheep poop and just stinking. Let's say why he was out there tending the sheep. All he did was worship the Lord. That's all he did. Worship God. Worship God. And it came a point where Israel was under attack by the Philistines. And uh, he had this big old giant, Goliath, that was just tormenting the people. Just straight up bullying the people. Day after day, he was just chumping them, really. And the whole army of Israel was afraid to step up to him. Even the king was afraid to step up to him. Israel had a big army. They're, like, they're looking at these giants like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with these guys. He's just punking them the whole time, every single day, day and night, day and night. So David got word of it, and something triggered his heart. Something just made him just bold and, and brave and just want to just run out and kill this big old giant. Now, him being a young kid, you would think that, where did he get this from? Where did he get this strength from? Where did he get this boldness from? Where did he get this uh, attitude where he wanted to just take a step up in Christ? That's really what he did. God told David to do that. That's not what David was thinking. God put that on his heart to run up and want to destroy Goliath. So, when David killed the Goliath, he was a, it was a brave and fearless act which caused David to operate in a leadership role without him even knowing it. That day, real talk, when you think about all the grown men and all the armies that was there, David was operating in a more mature level than anybody that was on that field that day. Don't look at people's age and think they're not more mature. Sometimes we can learn from them. Sometimes we can. He didn't realize that by him walking in obedience to what God was telling him to do, that he was stepping up into a leadership role. He didn't know that. He just knew, I'm not afraid of this giant, and he's not going to punk me. I'm not afraid of the devil, and he's not going to punk me. He's not going to whisper in my ear and tell me not to do this, not to do what God's telling you to do. Run from God's plan for your life. I got something better for you. Yeah, right. Death, doom, and destruction. I lived that life already. I'm not listening to that. And David didn't either. Despite of his age, size, war experience, he wasn't trained as a, a warrior. He wasn't trained as any kind of soldier at all. One thing he knew was kill the lion, kill the bear. God was with me. I'm going to kill him. God is with me. When God's telling us something to do, we got to have that same attitude. Don't get comfortable in the past victories and say, I'm not going to move forward. But let the past victories remind you of what God is still able and willing to do in your life. Let's not be afraid to step up. Let's not be afraid to do what God's telling us. Well, I never did it before. Okay. 
Ain't nobody never killed a Goliath or any other giants before but David. Unless you could refresh my memory, I don't remember anybody that. David probably was the first. I'm sure he wasn't the last. But there's giants in our lives that's telling us, no, you can't move forward. That's what he was doing. Who going to come forward? Who going to handle this? Who going to come and come up against me? Oh, y'all, y'all punks, y'all this, y'all that, y'all ain't doing nothing. Y'all weak. That's what the devil telling us every day. We wake up, we got the mighty Jesus living in our hearts, and he's telling y'all chumps, y'all ain't doing nothing. Y'all ain't got no power. You ain't going to never achieve what God's telling you to achieve. You ain't going to never reach your goals. You don't even know what your purpose is in life. What, what are you even alive for? What life are you living? You living for God. You living for yourself. Man, we warriors, y'all. We have a warrior living in us. He was already slaughtered as a lamb. He's alive now. He's a warrior right now living in us. Okay. So anyway... He didn't allow fear to keep him from growing up in God. Okay. I do gospel rap, right? I'm a gospel rapper. And I've been rapping for years. I've been rapping for years. And it's been good. It's been awesome. And I still do it now. But maybe a couple years ago, a few years back, God been putting on my heart like, Okay, yeah, you share your testimony when you go to shows. You do this, you do that. But I got more in you that I want to pull out of you. <laughs> God, I ain't trying to hear that. Let me just continue rapping. I'm, I'm good. I'm... Okay, uh, people prayed for you when you was eight, nine years old, said you was going to preach the gospel. I'm preaching the gospel rapping. I'm good. I'm running. I, I love you, Lord. I'm a believer in Christ. I got more in you. I got more in you that I want to pull out of you. I got more in you. Where you are now is not it. Where you are now is not it. So if you're comfortable where you are, that's not it. God has more for you to do for him. And so he told me, you know, before I even met Pastor Kelly, he told me, hey, you need to enroll in some school and, you know, start learning more about your word. It's just like a, it's like he put a desire in my heart. Like, I was reading the Bible all the time, but it was like a desire put there. Like, I just, I just want to learn more of his word. You know, let me, let me study the scriptures more. I don't mind going to school just to learn about the Bible. Where did that come from? Let me do this. Let me do that. But he was shaping me and molding me and he still is right now when I chose to obey God and agree with him he chose to raise me up from glory to glory but it first starts with obedience it first starts with finding out what God is telling you to do recognizing it is Jesus and doing it David had no clue that by killing Goliath that he would be this great king in the history of Israel. He had no clue by he, him taking a step in obedience that that would motivate the other children of Israel in the army to begin to fight. You don't know by your obedience what you will do when other people around you. By you taking a step might cause somebody else to take a step. By you stepping up might cause somebody else to step up. By you destroying giants might cause somebody else to destroy a giant. This life is not just about us. It's about the one who sent us, which is Jesus. Jesus didn't die just for one person. He died for the whole world. 
He was obedient till death. We could take a step up. We could allow God to mature us if we want to. Or we could choose to stay where we are, stay comfortable, and eventually you just get drained like a raisin. And then wonder, man, where my joy at? Why, why are my passion kind of leaving? Why I don't really desire, you know, to do things, the things that God want me to do. I don't really desire outreach like I used to. I don't, I don't really desire, you know, coming to church or, you know, spending time around believers and, and, and reading my word and listening to gospel music. I don't really desire that no more. I, I like listening to fleshly stuff. I like being around a lot of fleshly people. You know, the, the church setting is just not my setting no more. Is that God? No, it's a point in our life we chose to make a decision and say, God, no, I'm good. When we say we good, we can't go farther up. We can't elevate. God can't elevate us. Wow. Yeah, I studied my notes, so I'm already saying what I I wrote. (laughs) You know, you look at your notes like, oh, I already said that. Praise God. (laughs) <laughs> but anyway, when we obey to take a step up in God, we agree to allow God to mature us. Spiritual maturity is a continuation of development. Like I said before, if you want to stay comfortable and you see yourself, you, we've been at a certain place for years and years and years, and we good with that. That's a problem. It is. Don't be surprised if you hear a voice coming to your head telling you to step up in God. You need to spend more time on my word. You need to get planted in a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church. You've been running too long. Lord, I've been struggling with uh, these addictions so long. Okay, I got something for you. I can heal you from that. Do you still want to babysit it? Yeah, I, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it, so I'm going I'm to just, just hold this one. God developed me in other places, but with this, I'm good. Let me read down some more. In um, First King. Now, Elijah, like I said, he was running, and he ran a whole night, a whole day, whole night's journey into the woods, right? And then, this was what he said. And he asked that he might die, saying, it is enough now, Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. Remember I said, you know, we saying we good, it's enough. I'm no better than my fathers. I'm no better than the people that went before me. God, you possibly ain't going to use me. You can't use me no more. You don't need to use me no more. You know, I'm good where I'm at. Just let me stay here. God kept asking him. He said, Elijah said, it is enough now, Lord, take away my life. And he laid down, and he went to sleep under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose, ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights. We're trying to do things God telling us to do in our own power, in our own strength. And we get frustrated, we get tired, and we say, that's enough. 
I don't want to do it no more. That's what happened with Elijah. God had just used him to walk by faith, destroying all these prophets of Baal. Elijah got tired. Elijah got tired. I mean, it was plenty of men and women, men of God at that time that was getting destroyed by Jezebel. They were killing. I just said, you know, they were just killing Christians. Elijah like, look, man, I'm tired of running. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. That's enough, God. You used me enough. Uh, you used me to do all these great things. Look, God, I'm good. I'm, that's enough. I don't need to come up in you no more. I don't need to. To me, when you think about it, it's kind of arrogant. It's kind of prideful to tell God that where I am now, I'm good. So he was comfortable. And all I'm asking you this morning all I'm asking you this morning is to search your hearts. See where you're comfortable. See what God's telling you to do this morning. Allow the Spirit of God to give you strength to carry out the journey that he put before you. If it's too big, if, if you think it's too great, you're right, it is too great. Because God, the one telling you to do it. You can only accomplish it. In God's strength. That's why I say when Elijah spent time with God and did what God was telling him to do, he was able to go and do what God needed him to do in God's, in God's spirit and his strength. We might have done great exploits in our past, so we hang on to our past victories and tell God, that's enough, I'm good. Take the life that you have for me and let me do what I want. I don't want this life. That's why I gave you those examples of the life that I thought I had, that I wanted. I didn't want the life that God had for me. You know, it all boils back to being obedient, taking a step up in maturity, doing what God wants you to do. And let me... Move on. When we don't do what God wants us to do, eventually we will be removed and replaced. Now, God was telling Elijah plenty of times to wake up, to walk in him. Elijah kept making excuses. We make excuses to God. But God, but this, but that. God, I ain't, uh, I can't, I ain't, I ain't old enough. I ain't good enough. I ain't, I ain't went to school. I ain't did that. I ain't did that excuses he kept shooting God excuses and on down first king 19 verse 16 it says and Jahu the son of Nisha you shall anoint to be king over Israel and Elisha the son of Sephat you shall anoint to be prophet in your place so God pretty much got sick of Elijah complaining and telling him what he's not going to do. He said, okay, you ain't going to do it? You don't want to continue? You don't want to grow up? I'm going to let you go pick out your replacement. God will do it. I'm almost done. Got a couple more points that I want to make. But sometimes we we could be people who we, you know, we cross our T's, dot our I's. We do all these great things in God being believers. And, you know, it's like we're faithful. We're going hard for God. And as soon as we get what we want from God, then that's another type of people who say, I'm good now. That's enough. I can step behind the scenes. I ain't got to do nothing else. I reached the plateau of the life that I wanted for myself. So now, God, I really don't really need you like that no more. I'm 
on this last note, I just think that it's really not up to us to tell God it's not enough. Because when you think about it, when Jesus was on the cross, when he went through everything he had to go through, he never said it was enough. He said it is finished. He did everything he had to do so that we could be redeemed to him when Jesus said it was finished. You're watching a message from Connect Church of Jacksonville. Find us online at connectchurchjacks.org.